Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. Today we have a mailbag item that has been sent to me from Irish Components in the UK. This is a bit of a special one. I've actually had them for uh, probably uh, two or three weeks now, but I've been sworn to secrecy until the Rome Maker Fair has happened. And as I'm now showing this to you, obviously it has. So what I have are a stack of new um, controllers that had been sent to me. So let me just explain a little bit of background first. A lot of hobbyists, makers, designers, uh, students have to learn how to program, learn how to control hardware and things using something like uh, an Arduino Uno, an Arduino Mega, a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino Yun, which has got Linux and things in it, um, or other embedded systems. They're great, they're low cost, um, but when you've got your application all ready to go and you want to take it to the next level, what do you do? You know, you can't just put it in a box and sell it because it's not certified. It doesn't have a CE mark or a UL mark or whatever you need in your region. So there is a need to, um, how, you know, to easily take this to the next level. And if you're not planning on selling sort of hundreds of thousands of units or something like that, then you really want to start looking around for something that you can... Um, scale your application and hardware up into that will minimize all of those processes. So Irish Components along with Siemens and the Arduino uh, folks have come up with a new intelligent gateway um, product that is targeted at the educational market and that is designed to be Arduino compatible both with Arduino Shields and also Arduino Sketches. Uh, it runs Linux, so you can take a lot of code that's been written for, say, a Raspberry Pi or an Intel Galileo or other Linux devices and run it on this as well. And that includes great products like IBM's Node-RED, um, MQTT server like Mosquito, and things like SQLite 3. So you can very quickly, at the Linux level, develop an IoT gateway kind of application that is designed purely with uh, graphical design tools or mostly with graphical design tools and drag and drop capability which makes it very easy to get something up and running. Um, the devices that are in these boxes are the product of a couple of years work between Siemens, Irish Components and Arduino and what they are are some intelligent gateways they're in an industry format. I've got three of them. They're all the same. So I'm just going to unbox one of them. I think they're all the same. Yep, they are. They're all the same. So I'm just going to unbox one of them. So this is um, these are engineering samples. So I would imagine the final packaging might be a little different. Um, but the uh, actual enclosures and everything else are the same. So one of the things that's going to be very evident right away is the fact that this is in an industrial style enclosure. Okay, um, when you buy your Arduino or your Raspberry Pi or something like that, the first thing you have to do if you want it to be in some kind of um, permanent installation is find some kind of case for it that would allow you to mount it, to keep it cool, um, still be able to interface to it and things like that. This is the Siemens IoT 2020. It is based on an Intel Quark 1000 processor. This is the same CPU that is used in other um, development boards uh, like the Intel Galileo. And what Siemens have done with RS Components is they've created a new version, uh, a completely new product that is built to industrial standards, but that also is compatible, like I said, with Arduino Shields and Arduino Code. Literally, you can take a sketch uh, compile it from the Arduino IDE and upload it right into here and have it run without having to do any or very little code changes. You can also take your Node-RED or C++ or Java or Python uh, programs that you may have developed on something else or that are running on the Linux side of an Arduino Yun and put these in here as well. Um, so let's uh, have a close, get a closer look at this. Let's flip the lids off, open it up, and I'll take you on a tour of what's inside. Um, I've already done a video for the Rome Maker Fair, which is um, happening, um, or actually as you're watching this, it's already happened, where I introduced the product, but I don't really do a detailed technical 
review or anything like that. So what we're going to do is have a tour through the hardware of this. So we're going to take it to um, you know an unboxing. Well, we've done the unboxing, but uh, do a sort of a tear down and have a look at what makes this thing tick. Um, as I say, it's you know starting from the outside. It is DIN rail mountable, which is great. Which means that as you can see behind me. I have a couple of them already mounted on a demo board where I've used DIN rails and cable trunking to put together a little bit of a demo um, system that I'm going to use for future videos to show you how to uh, install the operating system, um, get Node right up and running, run some Arduino sketches to control some relays. I've got some power outputs at the bottom here which are high powered so I can put some big loads on here and things going through some um, industrial relays that's being driven directly from an Arduino uh, from the IoT 2020 um, as well as just a general um, sort of classic kind of wiring it's just not in a big steel box because that will make it difficult to video and everything else so let's rearrange the camera and let's go have a close look at this okay first things first um, this is the enclosure it's a uh, plastic probably ABS or something like that enclosure it has two halves to it um, on, so let's just walk around the outside before we open it up. Um, you've got two USB ports on the front. One is a host so you can plug things in here and as you'll see as I go through the demos and things in future videos, um, I already have confirmed that this will happily run with the um, Raspberry Pi standard, um, you know, the official Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi adapter which only costs sort of you know five to ten dollars or whatever it is on the market we have a USB um, host port where you could plug in and uh, use it as a COM port or use it for communications from the Arduino code even um, we have a 10100 Ethernet port on board user button a reset button markings on the front so there's nothing on the side except the, these these labels say engineering sample right now in the um, commercial ones that have just been announced today obviously that will have uh, production markings on it on the back of the unit we have the DC 24 volt input which is on this you know a fairly standard removable kind of plug and on the top we have a set of LEDs um, indicators they're brought out on light tubes so we've got power SD card access USB um, OC and user. Now the user light from what I've seen is effectively the same as the LED on an Arduino Uno, in fact most of the Arduinos, which is connected to uh, digital pin 13. So if you wrote a sketch that like the standard classic blink sketch you'd be able to flash this user light on and off quite easily. Um, and then you've got some other indicators here. Um, the X80 which indicates the plus is on this side this is for the power connector and indeed the positive is on the one towards the outside edge of the case and the inner one is the negative negative. Uh, and that's pretty much it we've got some vent holes top and bottom the case is actually um, one of these clip together kinds with um, little spring clips so it's fairly easy to get into if you need to and of course on the bottom of the case we've got the sta a standard um, DIN rail mounting capability right here so you just click it into a DIN rail. Uh, it looks like there are other options as well perhaps um, for wall mounting or something that could go into this case. I don't have it and I haven't seen anything. So let's get inside. Um, easiest way to get in here is gently squeeze the case starting at one end and just to uh, lift it up a little bit and work your way along. Just being careful not to break any of the molding of course and then that will just lift off and there we go so that's the top so um, with the top two by the way the the right hand side piece does flip up on a um, hinge so you can access when it's here you can access the SD card socket and the TTL uh, serial port there um, the left hand side will clip out so that you can also get access to the Arduino compatible I.O. pins. So you can actually plug in the proper Arduino shields, like uh, um, whether they be a display, motor controllers, I2C devices, ADCs, DACs and all sorts of other things. Um, they should be able to plug into here and work right off the bat. So here we've got the um, box open. Let me just use that to support this a little bit for the camera. 
So what we have on here, right in the middle, is the Intel Core 1000 processor. Well, it's a SOC. It's a complete system on a chip. We have 512 megabytes of RAM. Um, the device here, I believe, is the uh, Ethernet interface. This actually does have um, a lot of the Ethernet capabilities built into the um, Quark 1000 processor, but it probably needs the physical layer interface part um, on chips, so there's one here. There is a version of this board which is going to be sold by Siemens that will support two Ethernets and some other I.O. So as we go through this, you will notice that there's some unpopulated parts, uh, including some ports up here for uh, RS-232, RS-485, and the full um, effectively a full version of this will be made available f directly from Siemens. But what we're looking at here today is the educational one, uh, which is going to be sold exclusively through RS components. Um, what we also, so when we look through this, um, what we have over the left and bottom edges here are the interface um, devices for the Arduino. So we can actually change the voltages by shifting this jumper here between 5 volts or 3.3 volts I.O. capability. Um, there's a little bit of muxing available on these I.O. pins. Because of the way the Quark processor works, it has far more pins available than what the Arduino uh, pinout has. And so things like PWM or uh, analog inputs versus digital outputs uh, don't work the same way as, say, an 80 mega 328. So there are some multiplexes that will shift in and out the various components. There's also um, a analog to digital converter as a separate chip that these steering logic will route the analog pins, which are these ones here, up to the ADC that the um, device will then be able to read from the processor. Now, this doesn't affect the Arduino capabilities because if you're using an Arduino IDE, the hardware is actually abstracted from you anyway. When you start asking for digital pin 13 or A0 and A1, um, the underlying C compiler uh, based on the pins.h and other files that are part of the compiler um, will determine what the real pins actually are and what to do about it. So in this case, when you take your sketch, when you compile it, you would have told it that you're using the um, Quark 1000 processor, and it will make adjustments for the mappings appropriately. Um, what else do we have up here? We have a SD card uh, socket, which is where you can put anything up to a 32 gig um, SD card in here, which will then be able to run um, Linux and the Linux is available to download from Siemens website uh, without any issues. You just go on to it. I'll provide a link to it. Uh, you can download it, burn it to a flash um, and you bur the burning to the flash uh, SD card is exactly the same as you do for a Raspberry Pi or uh, many of the other devices. You just use the Windows Win32 uh, Win disk imager and you take the image file and you just write it to the SD card, pop it in, power it up, and away you go. There are a few little things you need to do once you power it up, like resizing the SD card to take, you know, to make all of the space available, but that's a fairly simple process. Um, the pins we have here, and I will provide an overlay just to show you which pins are what, they are a TTL serial port that acts as a console when you are booting up, and also you can use it for um, even you know, without an OS, you can actually talk to the board and interrupt the boot process and various other things. Once Linux is up and running, you can use this as a standard TTL um, I.O. port for the console and uh, basically act as a, a, as a communications from your PC rather than using SSH if you want to. Um, and that's what I've done. And you can use pretty much any of the supported FTDI uh, USB to serial interfaces from your PC to this. Uh, just make sure that you're using the 3.3 volt version of it. This little socket here is for an optional battery. The uh, Quark processor has a real-time clock built in, but the battery is not provided as part of the educational packet, but it just requires a fairly standard um, button cell with a lead to come into here. We'll see if I can find one to uh, link in, or I'll show you a picture of it anyway. Um, what else do we have on the top of the board? Of course, the two USB ports. Um, these are the two surface mount buttons for which are extended up through to the outside of the case that you can press for resetting things. So let's flip the board over and have a look on the bottom. So one of the things you won't find on pretty much any um, Arduino 
is what you see right in front of you. It, this is a PCI uh, MSATA port. And I actually have um, an Intel Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter already in one of mine up and running. And the software is right there that you can download from the um, Intel website that will go straight into the Linux OS and fire this thing up and, and um, away you go with uh, full Wi-Fi capabilities, very, very easy to get going. So that's nice to see that you can extend this. Um, and you, one thing you need to be aware of, though, is you, this is a full-length MSATA socket. So the Wi-Fi adapter that I had was only half-length, so I had to get a little um, extension made, and I actually managed to find one on Thingiverse and just 3D printed it that would allow it to clip under these clips at the bottom here. Um, the other things on, on the bottom is just some fairly standard um, support logic for the board. Um, these are these two empty sockets up here, if you're wondering what they are, they would be the RS-232, RS-485 controller chips, uh, probably the, you know, the drivers for RS-422, 485, etc. They're not populated on this board because the educational version, which is what this is, does not come with RS-232, RS-485 drivers. Um, we have surface mount LEDs which are brought out to the top of the case through light pipes, um, which is, if I just lift the case up, I've got it resting on here. So on the bottom of the case, you can see we've got the light pipes down here that will feed out to the top. Um, and that's pretty much everything that's on here. Now, because you've got, you know, uh, one of the things that you may find when you're doing a lot of Arduino programming is you run out of space very quickly, especially with something like an Arduino Uno. And the one thing that you will find when you start migrating your code to, um, to this device is that it will suddenly have a lot of space available to it. And that's because you've got the whole space of the SD card. Uh, and because you're uploading to this and compiling it to run on this, you can actually make much, much bigger programs without any issues. And you know, you as as you can see here, you just plug the um, Arduino shields right into this socket. Now you can make your own Arduino shields, or you can just buy readily built ones. So if you wanted to have a little LCD display here and leave the lid off, you could do that. If you wanted to build your own, so this is a um, Infineon RGB driver for an Arduino, and you can see here we've got the standard pinouts you would be able to just plug this right on here. And using the spy library, you would be able to now talk to this. You'd provide power through here. Your RGB strip would connect here, and away you go. So I haven't tried this particular board yet, but I, don't think, I can't think of any reason why it should not work. Um, do I have any other boards in here to see if they'll fit? Well, I have Arduino Ethernet shields, but of course you've already got Ethernet built in, so you wouldn't actually bother putting one of these on here. Um, but if you had an Arduino Wi-Fi shield, for instance, that would probably work. Um, although, again, because you can put a Wi-Fi adapter at the Linux level, there would really be no point in adding your own Wi-Fi adapter uh, as an Arduino shield. It wouldn't run anywhere near as quickly as the one that would be sitting at the uh, Linux level. And there are a set of libraries already available through the Arduino IDE that will allow you to run uh, both the Wi-Fi and the, the physical Ethernet that's running on Linux. It's like the same way as a Yun works, is there's a bridge layer that lets you get back uh, into the back end and allows you to do all of the IP stacks and things like that quite happily. So um, that pretty much is everything as far as a walkthrough of the board. I think the other one of the things that's worth noting here, aside from the fact that you're going to be able to run much bigger sketches, is the fact that this board is an industrial board. It's been built by Siemens um, for industrial purposes. So it is going to be CE and UL certified. So you could put it in a rack um, similar to what I've, you know, I've done right here with these and use it in some kind of um, commercial or industrial application if you want. Uh, in future videos, we will investigate that further and actually test them out and things like that. I will be doing a series of videos, including how to set up um, the operating system, how to ch try and, and run your Arduino shields, 
um, how to write a sketch for using the Arduino IDE and upload it to this and, and many, many other things. Um, but for now, that's about it. That's the uh, IoT 2020 that's now available through RS Components. Um, it's a great educational board. It's going to be, I don't know what the exact price is yet because I haven't seen it announced, but I do know that it's going to be way under 100 euros. So that would be, you know, $150 or something like that or less. Uh, it's going to be way under that, but until the pricing comes out, I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be. But the one thing to bear in mind is that this is targeted at the educational market. And also, because of its nature, you're going to be able to use it for homes, you know, for your own applications and things like that as well in the home. It's not so expensive that it's prohibitive. Some of the other PLCs and controllers that I have looked at over the, you know, the last year or so have been quite um, expensive, very cool but expensive. So, you know, the average hobbyist or maker or uh, educational establishment probably wouldn't want to be buying them to be teaching their students or, um, you know, implementing them for their home uh, alarm system or heating and ventilation control and things like that. These boards are pitched at a price uh, and the fact that they come with certification such that you could easily and inexpensively use them in a home installation um, or a small office or even a, you know an industrial situation where you wanted maybe a few of them and it didn't justify it, you know high end really really expensive things but you still needed them to be certified uh, this can fit right in that bill and it's easy to program because it's open a lot of other PLCs use proprietary programming languages um, you know you have to buy uh, and get all the software from the vendor. In this case, uh, even though Siemens is the vendor, they're the ones that have built it and it's sold through RS, um, you, you can use things like Node-RED, you can use things like Mosquito, um, Arduino IDE. I actually found that I took the very latest version of the Arduino IDE from the Arduino website, um, downloaded the additional um, hardware, which you can do straight from the menus in there, told it I had an Intel Galileo Generation 2, uh, in that case, that, that was what was on there, and it actually worked perfectly straight to this. I actually um, took a couple of Ethernet, a Wi-Fi, um, an analog to digital, the blink sketch test and things, and they all ran without any alterations. Um, I can't guarantee that everything will work right off the bat. Um, this, you know, it's a very new device, so there may be some um, teething things that would get worked out, but it does have... Um, a couple of really big companies and the support of Arduino um, behind this as well. So even if you did discover something not working right away, it would not be long before uh, those issues would be resolved and you can get on with um, your development work. And you know, if you've already got some work that you've done with an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or you know, numerous different devices and you want to make it into some kind of um, commercial or at least more robust packaging ready for use at home or the office or somewhere else, then you could migrate pretty a lot of that straight to this and it would run with pretty much no alterations. So that's pretty, pretty much it for this introduction. I think the next videos is going to be getting the operating system and setting it up, expanding the file system. I'll do a separate one for Node-RED and things like that. So um, let's wrap this up. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, well, then don't. But um, there will be more to come on this. And it, this looks like my new favorite um, home platform for uh, playing around with Arduinos and Linux and everything else. Uh, up to now, I've been using one or the other. Now I have some devices that will actually do both. So excellent. I love it. Anyway, see you next time.